Okay, so thank you for joining the channel, and if you can, please like and subscribe. And today we're going to be covering LT Spice. LT Spice for a dependent circuit, three loops that you see in the bottom right hand corner. And this is going to have a 3x factor. So again, a minus 3v uh, naught is what we're approaching. So if we go ahead and start the uh, the process of going through this, the idea of this all uh, with LT Spice, and again, this is specifically for Mac, is that we can go ahead and set this up and become a little bit more familiar with how to solve. And what makes this so interesting is certainly that with Mac is always a challenge. And the challenge is the hotkeys, the shortcut keys are different than the PC. So I wanted to make a video about that. And again, we're recreating this. We're going to have two voltage sources, uh, 25 and 10 volts. And as you can see there, there's two 5 ohms, 14, 3, and a 1 ohm resistor that all uh, make up this circuit. So what is important again is that with this particular problem, we have a V naught that's across the three ohm resistor. And that is what is part of our constraint. In other words, what is V naught? And V naught is directly related to three times by the current that's going across that resistor. That's what it mathematically should come out to. But more importantly, V naught is in the dependent voltage source, which is the top left-hand corner, the negative three V naught, you expect it to be three times the value of the voltage. So let's see if this works. So importantly here is using E, right? So again, as you can see here, uh, I'm using here a component that's gonna be our voltage dependent source, which is E uh, with the Mac version of this. Okay, so that is how we are going to generate and create this voltage dependent source. I solved this problem in a prior video, which I'll link here in the description. And certainly with that, and I also did an example with the one loop problem. So we'll be able to do the one loop example that I have a video on. Uh, hopefully this one will feel more comfortable to approach this as well. And you should feel right at home with setting this up. The only thing you have to watch out for is to make sure that when you do draw the, the wires from the dependent voltage source back to its resistor, right the one that's a three the three ohm resistor is to be sure that you have the the positive and negative terminals correct uh, connected properly in other words the positive end of the, the dependent voltage source should be connected to the positive end of v naught all right so i'll show you that here as well so you get the hang of it again uh with these type of problems or at least using this app which is a wonderful app and it's free so you can't technically complain and surprisingly it can do a lot with lt spice uh with this free variation of the software to me it's pretty exciting that it's it's still free and hopefully it remains free and i'll continue to use it as long as possible because if, if it's for free it's for me it's my my motto when it comes to software uh okay so Nevertheless, now what I'm doing is I'm just going ahead and entering in all the resistor values and all of my uh, values for my voltage sources. And the big catch, of course, is how I'm going to wire this uh, dependent voltage source and how it's attached back through the three ohms. Then I'll also show you my solutions for the currents, so what we, we, we get for the our current sources uh, for each of the loops. And I'll also show you the voltages, uh, particularly voltage across the one ohm, three ohm, and of course our dependent voltage source, which hopefully be a three uh, multiplying factor. So let's go ahead and check that out. So here's an important step about the wiring aspect of this. So as you notice here, I'm going to attach the negative end, right? To, of the dependent voltage source to the negative terminal of V naught. Okay, and that's really, the big catch and if you don't do that exact you're more than likely going to have solutions that are going to be incorrect and i also solve this exact problem by hand as well so take a look at that video too to show you how you could actually approach a dependent voltage source finally when you set this up what you have to do of course include the ground include your dot trend a thousand i always use uh, a thousand because again it's just a dc problem so it doesn't matter if it's one second ten seconds it should all be the same but just convention uh so the ground can go anywhere but it makes sense to put it right at the bottom particularly in this case the bottom of the 10 volt source and again this is a transient approach that i'm using here so dot tran stands for transient and now we go into 
our dependent source and changing our value. Okay, so again, it's minus three that we're going to be using. Uh, you can leave, change the prefix or not. You can change it to R for that it's going to matching the 3 ohm resistor that it's connected to. And then we're going to attempt to run. Okay, so there's our, our diagram here. So we can see that with our output window, we can now take a look at both currents and voltages. So let's go ahead and take a look at the current that's going through the far right loop, which is pulling on to be three amps. We're gonna look at the current of the top loop. So the four genome gives us the one amp going through the, the top loop. And you're gonna have this five amps for the two ohms and the four amps for the three ohm resistor. And again, to prove this, we can use KCL and analyze each node, which I go over in another video as well, to express to you how you can show that you have a net current of zero at each of those nodes. So you have three nodes, technically four if you include the ground. And now what we're showing you here is all the currents together for, for all the resistors. So you can see how they actually look like. Okay, and again, the scaling, I have to adjust it a little bit, but it's three, uh, there's your one, your four, and your five amps. So this problem comes up pretty nice and neat, which is always great whenever you have solutions that are kind of whole numbers, which is always exciting as well. To change that, of course, you can change the scale and to get, so you can see the numbers land perfectly. So now let's look at the voltages across each of the resistors. We're gonna look at resistor one, and we can see that we have a voltage of three volts. And now more importantly, let's check the resist the voltage of the three ohms, which is our V naught, and that comes out to be 12 volts. And here's a moment of truth to see if we did it right. And there we have 36 volts. So 12 times three gives us back the 36 to the, the three factor, right? Gives that that th that 36 volts, which we're, we're, we're anticipating the solution should be. So, so far everything looks great as far as our analysis, plus this matches the, the actual map that we worked on. Here I'm adjusting the axis manually for the plot limits so our numbers fall right in line of our hash of our tick marks. I mean it's always nice when it's nice and neat. So there it is, the 12 and 36. You can see the three to one ratio of V naught to minus three V naught, which is great. So it matches what we anticipated over here, of course. And just like that, right, we're able to solve this. Thank you so much. If you learned something, kindly subscribe and like, and I'll keep producing more. Till next time.